Good morning everybody, what's happening? Welcome to another E39 5 Series video. So today I'm going to show you how to remove the radio and install a different one with an auxiliary input cable. Now the reason why I'm swapping out these radios is my E39 was built in 2001 and I need at least a, 2000, a late 2002, early 2003 CD player in order to put in the factory auxiliary kit. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is remove this radio here by pulling back on the volume knob. So first you're going to need a set of Allen keys such as this. We're going to use that little 2 millimeter and the 2.5 millimeter for this job. Okay, so first we'll put the 2 millimeter Allen key down here in the hole below the volume knob that we just removed. Turn it a quarter of a of a turn counterclockwise and pull back and there we go now the the radio is detached and we'll just release the clip on the side connection next we will remove the CD player to make room for the new one Let's take our larger Allen key and we'll loosen up two Allen bolts located here and here all the way out until they stop turning. Now we can reach in and remove the CD player. Squeeze the tab and pull the antenna connection off. Now we're going to lift up this plastic clip here and remove the harness from the back of the CD player. Now as you can see here the production date on this is January 2001. This car was made in 2001 and it's too old to accept our auxiliary kit, the factory kit from BMW, and I will link those up in the description below. Okay, here is the new CD player that I purchased on eBay. As you can see, it was produced, manufactured in September of 2005, which is compatible with our auxiliary kit from BMW. And here is our auxiliary kit that I picked up on Amazon. As always, I'll put a link to this in the description below. Okay, so here are the two radios, the new one and the old one. And before I put the new one in, I'm just going to swap out this plastic trim piece on the front because my old radio here, uh, the plastic is in much nicer condition. Okay, so here is the plastic trim that I removed from my old CD player, which is in really nice shape. And actually to remove this, you're going to need a very small Phillips screwdriver. Here's what one of the little screws looks like. Now there's two of these on the back of this cover that you're going to remove. They're actually on the sides. Then you're going to need to get a flathead, a very small flathead screwdriver. You're going to need like the micro size, something like this. And if you go all the way around the edges of the cage of the CD player and this faceplate, there is about one, two, three, four, five, six places where you need to pry and get the tabs to free them up, free up the plastic cover from the metal CD player. And the buttons on this are nice and clicky, much nicer than the replacement that I bought. Okay, so here is the CD player. This is the, the new one that's going in. And let's turn it over here. Here's one of the Phillips you're gonna remove. Flip it around. There's the other Phillips right here. Okay, so now it's time to install our new cord. It looks like this. But, as you can tell, we already have a cord here. This black plug that goes into the back of our main harness. Now, some cars aren't going to have this. And if your car does not have this, installation is super easy. You just plug this in. This is for your auxiliary cable. There's the port right here. And you plug this in into that spot, 
put everything back together and you're done. Most cars, however, are probably going to have this, this plug existing. You're going to lift up this tab with a small flathead screwdriver and slide this out. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these two wires on this particular model. We have a black and white and a black and brown. And I'm going to insert these into the new harness right here in the same position. So they're pretty much just going to go on the end. And you could really do this either way. You could reuse this plug, or you can use this one right here. Now, since it's easier to remove two wires and put them into this plug than it is to remove these three and put it in here, I'm going to do it that way. So first, we need to remove this clip. Lift this up, this tab with a flathead. Slide this piece out. Okay, here are the three wires. We're going to leave those in place. Okay, here are the three new wires for the auxiliary function. Now we have four more ports. See them? One, two, three, four. These two windows right here we're going to skip. We're going to skip those. And then these two right here, that's where we're going to take these two wires from. And we're going to feed it into our new clip. Now, as if this could not get any easier, if you look really closely right on the corner of this connector, you're going to see number 6 and a number 1, and the arrow facing this way. So we want to make sure that the orientation of the existing wires, the black and white and the black and brown, go into our new connector the same way that they are positioned in the old one. So, quick shortcut. I can tell that the black and white wire, that's black with a white stripe, that one goes into the port, or the pin number 6. So I'm going to use this little 6 here as my guide for installing the wires. Okay, so to remove these wires, I'm going to push them in. Push down the tab with a small flathead. and then slip it out of the connector. I'll flip this over, push it in a little bit, okay and that's all there is to it. Now all we have to do is plug these two wires into our new harness. Okay here we are number six, that's the black and white. And then back here, number 12, that is our brown and black. And now the fun part of this installation that I'm going to skip over is how you're going to route uh, your input jack here. Now I'll put a link right here where you can click. Go ahead, click that now. And that will show you how I installed it into the cigarette lighter, um, into that cigarette port down here in an E53X5, which is pretty cool and we really like it. And here's what the BMW instructions look like. They want to have you route this back behind your dash and into your glove box, which is also cool, but I'm not really a big fan of it. So I'm just sort of going to leave this open right now. I'm not sure where I'm going to mount it. Okay, now that we have all five wires secure, I've routed our cable back behind the dashboard. Now don't forget to slide this connector piece back together. And then we'll pop the whole thing back into the main harness right here. Okay, now we can reinstall our CD player. And just as a side note, double check your date and make sure you're putting the right one back in. We'll tighten up the two Allen bolts with our 2.5mm Allen key. And finally we will slide our radio back into place. And remember to slide the radio face in at an angle here. And push it right here until you hear it click. 
and don't forget to put the volume knob back. Okay, now is the moment of truth. We can turn the ignition on and check and see if scrolling through our modes here, we can get the audio, the auxiliary audio part to show up. Okay, now this needs a new ribbon, which is a DIY for another day, but here's our mode button over here. No disc. Auxiliary. But, um, yep, that says AUX Auxiliary. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this channel. Really appreciate your support. If this video helped you out, please smash that like button, subscribe, and if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below.